Hey, what is up guys? So we are going to be going over the best cards for you guys to side deck. And before someone says, wait, there looks like there's more than 15 cards. And you would be right. And that is because depending on what deck you are playing, this is going to factor in what is the best or the top 15 cards. Usually it's top 10s, but because the extra deck is 15, it's a top 15 video. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, depending on your deck, you might want to not play certain cards. Uh, for example, if you uh, need to tribute some mask of restrict, will probably not be in the top 15 uh, cards that you want to actually side deck. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now keep in mind that this is the TCG and OCG, uh, simply because in the OCG they do have the link format, so they're playing a few different cards, but pretty much it's the same. Uh, as far as the meta game goes. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it with our first card, Anti-Spell Fragrance. Uh, shuts down your opponent. I guess I'll give like a brief explanation. Uh, completely shuts down Pendulums, but uh, also can slow other decks down. Very just solid card overall. Next up, Retaliating Sea. There are so many spell cards that just special summon monsters. So uh, yeah, pretty good stuff indeed. Uh, you're able to then uh, special summon this card, and then on top of that, any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. It can completely shut down certain decks. And then, uh, if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you get to add a Earth Insect uh, Monster with 1500 or less uh, attack from your deck to your hand, which pretty much covers uh, the rest of the sea archetype, uh, meaning the Flying Sea as well as Maxi, but Maxi, I would consider that mostly in the main deck anyways, but if you're not main decking uh, Maxi, obviously side decking is definitely a great card. I'd say 90% of people already main deck Maxi anyways. Uh, next up, Mask of Restrict and Zombie World. These essentially are kind of the same thing, uh, unless there's someone that's still tributing zombies in 2017. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Zombie World and Mask Restrict, they can definitely shut down the uh, Draco Kings, uh, as well as some other obscure decks that you need to tribute, but for the most part, that's basically what it does counter. Uh, next up, Gamma Seal, uh, deals with the Lagia, deals for the Dolka, uh, a lot of those dinosaur decks out there. It's definitely one of the most popular decks for budget players, I would say, in this format. Uh, but yeah, this can get rid of problematic cards, definitely a great card in the side deck. It doesn't have to be Gamma Seal, but just the Kaijus in general, whether you are running uh, Gamma Seal, uh, the other ones, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter. Most commonly it's Gamma Seal just because he doesn't have that much on the stats for attack and you can just run it over. Uh, next up, a lot of people are already main decking this, but uh, if you're not main decking this, a lot of people are heck main decking three copies. Even in the OCG, a lot of people maxing out on this, either in the main or in the side deck, Ghost, Ash, or Ash Blossom, and Joyce spring is what it's called in the tcg very very excellent card indeed it just shuts down certain decks your opponent activates pot of desires and the banish 10 you just activate this it has so many different effects whenever they would add a card and special summon or send a card from the deck to the graveyard uh, just overall really good card plus it is a tuner uh really awesome stuff indeed from ghost ash next up for ben chalice very good card to chain when your opponent is uh, doing things. Specifically with True Kings, it's even better because uh, the guy that actually recently topped uh, with it, uh, I'll link that video down below, but a uh, really good little quick combo is if they are using a uh, Dryden and uh, they're trying to negate the, uh, the Draco uh, field spell, you're able to actually pop Chalice. Uh, when they are actually activating the uh, Drancy. Really, really insane free extra advantage with that little play there. Uh, next up, a Grail Eagle. Just excellent card if they make a boss monster. A lot of people in the OCG even side decking this. Uh, it's crazy to see uh, Gradle's seeing some play, but that's cool. I like the innovation. I like seeing things evolve. Uh, a lot of the side deck cards are kind of familiar, but this is one of the newer ones that we haven't seen in a while. Usually, again, it's when they uh, just drop the uh, boss uh, Draco. You just snatch stealing that card. Really good stuff indeed. Uh, next up, this card is really uh, good and solid against just a lot of different things. Uh, also, side decking this card to counter your opponent's side deck uh, can also be good. Eternal Nightmares, pay 1,000 life points to target a face-up spell track on the field, destroy it. You can only activate this effect of it once per train, but just really solid card overall. Now, this one way more popular in the OCG, but I still think it deserves a spot on the top 15. Um, but Skull Meister over here, during either player's turn when a card effect is activating your opponent's graveyard you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard to negate the effect really really amazing card imperial order a lot of people main decking this but really great side deck card overall can completely shut down certain decks specifically uh any deck that really requires a lot of spells uh next up ghost ogre and snow rabbit a lot of people have access to this card now i believe after the uh, reprint 
most people are, have easy access to it. So really great overall solid card against a lot of different decks. Um, Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon, uh, more so in the OG, I see a lot of people side decking a few copies of Book of Moon. But Book of Eclipse, uh, still an okay card. I personally prefer it, Chalice. Uh, over Eclipse uh, just because they have the potential to draw most of the time I know that you're not gonna let your opponent draw uh, But there is the a negative effect of it, but it's still one of the more solid cards just to get rid of everything potentially uh, If they have a very large board now next up a uh, different dimension grand a lot of people side decking this as well Just to deal with certain things for one turn. I know macrocosmos D fissure They're solid cards but some decks they can't uh, really utilize those cards because they need to send stuff and this is like a one turn uh, Macro or D fissure kind of one-sided essentially as well uh, Especially uh, if you chain it to whenever your opponent is doing something really good stuff overall now um Pretty much, I consider Zombie World Magistrates like one card. I also consider all four of these essentially one card in the top list. Um, Typhoon, uh, Twin Twisters, Cosmic Cyclone, and Galaxy Cyclone. I would say more so Twin Twisters and uh, Cosmic Cyclone uh, if you have access. Uh, this card is still relatively uh, cheap for how good it is, but uh, Cosmic Cyclone a little bit more expensive. Very, very solid card. But uh, being able to banish things and being a quick play is really solid. You do have to pay a thousand. But basically getting rid of your opponent's back row, but um, this card is still relatively strong indeed. Uh, just stuff, again, just to get rid of uh, back row for when your opponent side decks certain cards against you, you have access to getting rid of their stuff. Uh, but like I said, I, I personally prefer Twin Twisters and Cosmic Cyclone. They tend to see more play, uh, but if you're playing a deck that can use Grass as Green or anything that just like randomly sends cards to the graveyard, heck, Light Sworn, uh, I mean, I guess if they throw Macro, you're not going to get it out on board. But I guess Cyclone can have more value for certain decks. Uh, next up, Denko Seca, I have Paleozoics, <laughs> rip that deck if you can uh, make this card relatively quick enough. They just have all the traps. Uh, they lose them pretty fast. Uh, next up, DD Crow over here. Really solid card overall. Uh, just being able to banner certain things out of the graveyard is really key uh, against certain decks, especially when they go for their combo pieces. Uh, solid call overall. So basically, this was the top 15. I know that there are some cards. Uh, this is technically 20 cards if we count the two rows, but like there's multiple that are kind of the same. So that that's pretty much it for the top. But I want to also mention some other cards you guys might not have heard of, uh, but are all still pretty solid cards. Again, it, 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 this list can be different depending on what deck you're playing because some decks I can't utilize some of these cards. Like if you're playing Pendulums, yeah, you probably don't want a side deck anti-spell fragrance. Uh, but if you go, are going against another Pendulum player, it's not the worst thing. You complete your scales, you say your opponent can't complete their scales. Uh, but yeah, keep that in mind as well. But anyways, uh, other great cards that could be considered, again, on the top 15 if you're playing other decks. Uh, Flying Sea, overall, relatively great card. Uh, makes it so your opponent cannot exceed summon, and some decks, they rely specifically on that, and that can shut down your opponent. Uh, until they go ahead and they're like, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and side deck some of those, um, Ghost Ashes, or... Uh, maybe the Ghost Reaper, and then they can go ahead and Synchro up. Because these are all tuners. All of the, the new um, Ghost cards, they are all tuners, which is excellent. Now, this one is a Psychic, so uh, this could have extra value if you're playing a certain deck. Uh, like Cyframes. Uh, I know that there was one guy in the OCG that topped recently playing Cyframes. So, e Tally go into Ghost Ogre, you have access to Synchroing up. Uh, but anyways... Uh, Imperial Iron Wall, if your deck cannot uh, rely on uh, your opponent banishing cards, really, really good card overall. Next up, Macro Cosmos, it depends on what deck you're playing, uh, but I think most players favor different Dimension Ground just because it has that surprise factor, and on top of that, uh, it's a kind of a one-sided thing. Uh, Chaos Hunter also is a great card uh, for making it so your opponent cannot banish cards. Same thing with Kaiku, pretty much the same effect, kind of stopping your opponent in their tracks. Ghost Reaper, this card, I really like this card a few formats ago. Right now, it might not be the hottest thing just because the True Kings are such a popular deck. A lot of them don't even run an extra deck, but it can still be an excellent card. Uh, randomly, if you go, uh, well, if you're playing um, the True Kings, I definitely think you have a lot of room in your extra deck. So you can fill it up with ABC Buster, you can put the uh, Totally Awesome, you can hit a lot of different things in certain decks. Uh, absolutely can destroy uh, decks just like turn one. I've seen so many players just scoop up when you call like Buster Dragon if they're playing ABC or a lot of things just can lose this card immediately. Next up, Brain Control. Now, uh, it does have an errata, so it's not as good, uh, but it has to be a monster that can be normal summon. But I've seen a lot of players actually run this card in their side deck in the OCG. 
uh, and uh, it's still an okay card. Again, it depends on what deck you're playing. Next up, uh, this is going to be something to look forward to in the future. I did see some players actually side decking this card already, but Drool Mockbird was a really popular card against Spellbooks, and if you guys didn't know, Spellbooks are getting more support. This card was actually $10 at one point. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to go up again, uh, depending on Spellbook support, but Spellbooks, they just lose to this card. Like, they really need to search like 50 cards uh, in one turn, and by 50, I mean probably like 5 or 6, but you guys get the idea. It, it shuts them down from adding uh, other cards, so um, if your opponent adds a card, um, um, to their hand, uh, except during the draw phase, you send it as a hand trap, and for the rest of the turn, neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand, but really, really solid card overall. Next up, I saw a few decks running Eradicator Epidemic Virus can completely shut down a certain decks. It's kind of one of those niche cards, but it's definitely uh, a good card if you're playing a certain deck that can really utilize it. Uh, next up, goes and Match. Uh, now, this affects a player, uh, the True King cards... Um, uh, it says like it's like it makes it so like the cards are immune to the spells and traps or whatever you use to tribute summon it with. But goes and match actually affects the player, not the cards. So it's a really good card. This card, this card and ri rivalry, ri rivalry. I can't say, <laughs> I can't say that. Rivalry, ri rivalry. Uh, oh, I'll type in of warlords. Uh, okay, Rivalry of Warlords is also a great uh, side deck card similar to this. Goes and match affects the attribute, and this one affects the type. So these are kind of the same card, but against certain decks that need their combo pieces, and they have like multiple different uh, types or attributes, these, these cards have always been really popular uh, in the side deck. They're not as hot, but I still see players side decking them. It's still overall a really solid card if maybe you aren't playing some of these cards. Or I understand some of these cards are expensive like Ghost Ash and you know you swap some stuff out. Uh, Lose a Turn hasn't been as popular, <coughs> but um, against certain decks, uh, this can hurt really, really really extensively uh like dinosaurs they really focus on special summoning uh whereas a deck like the uh draco kings uh or was it uh king draco's uh what do they call what do they call them tcg the true draco slayers okay um these um you tribute some of them anyways but it's still an overall like good card uh, against certain things again like dinosaurs uh any deck that just requires special summoning, which is pretty much most decks uh Obviously, this deck uh, don't get hurt by it too much. Uh, next up, Mistake, pretty good against just a lot of different things. A lot of different decks like to search out a ton, uh, and it's still overall an okay card. Uh, again, it depends on the deck. Uh, again, with the support that Spellbook is potentially getting in the future, these could be excellent cards, both of these. Mistake, Mistake, and Arrest, Droll, Lockbird. Uh, OCG players have been side decking them. There's, there are some Spellbook and decks still actually doing some stuff. I'm trying to get you guys prepared. Maybe keep these cards if you have them, or if you pick them up relatively cheap right now and in the future, the Spellbooks, they get some really, really crazy good support. Then a lot of people will want these cards, so it'll go up in value. Next up, uh, Lencia can also be a really decent card, so uh, neither player can banish cards for the rest of the turn. Kind of like a one turn, uh, similar to the different dimension ground. Uh, but <clears throat> next up, Regeki Darkhold, also the Kaiju, uh, Uninterrupted Slumber, uh, or Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Uh, all of these essentially the same effects, but uh, getting rid of some stuff, very excellent uh, cards. Uh, if you guys are not already main decking them, definitely consider side decking them, because uh, they are pretty good cards. You get rid of Problematic cards. it's... And like all Book of Clips can hit everything. Sometimes cards cannot be destroyed or they have something to protect it. So um, this could be uh, better than this in certain scenarios. Also, I wanted to mention these cards. I saw a few players actually running this in the OCG. They're kind of more niche. Uh, but interesting enough, the selection, so you pay a thousand life points and negate the summon of a monster that has the same type as a monster on the field and destroy it. So it's a little bit cheaper, I guess, than uh, like this uh, Psalm Strike, but still an excellent card overall and a decent little card. It's pretty cheap. I have seen, uh, like I said, this, this this is a card from the OCG. I wanted to pl I played this card a long, long time ago uh, versus like Black Wings. But uh, it's a decent little card. It's not bad at all. But I, I want to say it's more niche. I wouldn't we want to consider it on like this top list. Uh, and then Intercept, pretty interesting card actually. I saw a few players in the OCG running this. But anyways, actually only when a tribute summon monster with one tribute, um, you get to take control of that monster. It's not until the end phase. Not until the next round. You just take control of it, man. For ever snatch steal. Uh, after the game, your opponent has to give you the card permanently. No, uh, but it's just a really cool card. Uh, interesting. It, it's got a monarch on the picture. Uh, not not really used for monarchs now with the true kings being super popular. But. Overall, really solid cards, but anyways guys, if you guys felt like I missed out on any cards that could be included in this top video, let me know down below in the comment section.
below. But uh, anyways, these are the best cards to side deck, so get your uh, cards ready if you guys are going to some tournaments or if you're just playing online or something. You want to go to game two and three and wreck your opponent with some cards. These are definitely some of the best cards for you guys to side deck. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you slap a ring on that like button, hit that subscribe video for more Thousand Degree Knife videos.